Terrorists from ISIS, Al-Qaeda, Al-Shabaab, and any of the other groups determined to change the world to their image are all smart enough to realize something we often miss in the equation. Money, as in the world economy. For while the surface plan calls for blood in the streets around the world, they are smart enough to understand that every time terror strikes a major city, it forces a government to spend money on security and can have a ripple effect on something as simple as shopping and dining tendencies, all of which, they hope, will impact the nation's bottom line. His column today at Newsmax.com is aptly entitled, Terrorism Threatens European Property and uh, Prosperity and Democracy. He's the veteran syndicated columnist, professor of business and economics at the University of Maryland, Peter Morisi. All right, Peter, let's go ahead and dig into this, because you said that right after the bombing in Madrid in 04, London in 05, spending and tourism dipped, quickly rebounded, but you say it won't happen this time. Why? Well, essentially, confidence has now been dramatically shaken in the Europeans' capacity to secure their cities, to ensure the safety of tourists and business people. So I don't expect tourism to quite bounce back, but more fundamentally, I expect that foreign businesses are going to be reluctant to send their employees to places like Paris and Brussels and to invest in Europe. Already, the equity markets are demanding a risk premium for Europe. That was before the bombings in Paris. And now that will expand. There is an element of political risk involved in Europe that is akin to the risk in Mali. What is it then that the European countries can do in order to offset this? Anything other than basically going out and killing as many terrorists as possible? What can they do from here? Well, you can't fight terrorism at home. That simply won't work because some will always seep into the country. You're going to have to secure the borders, finally, so you stop this wave of refugees and, and, and bringing, you know, you can't have a million refugees, two million refugees a year coming in and not expect some terrorists to seep in. And then they have to go after uh, ISIS and al-Qaeda where they live. Uh, if, people might not like it. Uh, people like Barack Obama don't want to hear about it, nor does, uh, you know, Mr. Holland in France. But it's either fight him over there or fight him here. You know, these terrorists have a substantial financial backing. The other thing is they need to clean up at home. Uh, neighborhoods like Wallenbeek, uh, Molenbeek, excuse me, uh, which are very large, uh, have become areas of soft sovereignty for, for, for Belgium. Uh, likewise, St. Denis in, in, in Paris, soft sovereignty. They hardly know what's going on there. Terrorists can basically do whatever they please there. They can acquire automatic weapons, make explosives, and network throughout the European community to plan their next attack. As you pointed out in the article, the success of the EU was built on the free movement of goods and people across borders without customs or immigration checks. Does that not tell us immediately the fallacy of the EU? And also, it's a lesson that we have to learn here in America. Look, things are different in the 21st century. This isn't 1850 where people can just waltz in on a boat and you don't have to be concerned about them. Well, that's the thing. In Europe, if you enter through Greece or Italy, you're entitled to move any place on the continent, essentially, except the UK. As a consequence, people can slip through the weak cracks in the system. Uh, they don't have a common customs system, and they don't have a common immigration system. You know, Mississippi's a poor place, but getting into, uh, uh, getting into the United States, into Mississippi through the Gulf Coast, is just as tough as getting into New York, maybe even tougher. Uh, the Europeans don't have a system. Now, what that means is if they start having border checks and custom checks and immigration checks along the French border, the Swiss border, the German border, it will be kind of like having the same between New York and New Jersey at the Holland Tunnel. At that point, Newark Airport ceases to be a point of entry into New York, and commerce between New York and New Jersey dramatically slows down. I've only got about Before 30 seconds left. EU, I need to make this point very quickly. I've only got 30 seconds left. Your comment on Pfizer and Allergan merging into $155 million inversion deal. Here goes more business overseas, Peter. Absolutely. The Democrats think they can tax people endlessly. It reminds me of an old saw. A, a New York company moved to Connecticut to get away from New York City taxes. And Mr. Lindsay, then the mayor, complained, to which uh, the, the CEO responded, you can't expect everybody to live on the corner of 42nd Street and 5th Avenue just so you can tax them. 25% rate, highest in the industry. They're getting 17 to 18% when they move over. There it is, folks. Simple economic lesson. Go to Newsmax.com. Peter's column, Terrorism Threatens European Prosperity and Democracy. Read it and learn. Peter Morisi, always a pleasure. Thanks for joining us. Now, for those who believe numbers don't lie, new ones talking politics give us something new to chew over. Next, right here on The Hardline.